Okay, today I'm going to do a quick video just to show you how to do a, um, put a basic Go website onto a web server. So uh, at the by the end of the video, we'll be able to post our simple hello world onto a uh, web server uh, using uh, DigitalOcean. Uh, for my IDE, I'll be using GoLand by uh, JetBrains. It's a fairly new IDE for the uh, Go programming language. So let's go and get started. First thing I'm going to do is create a new file. I'm just going to call it main.go. For my package name, just main import. Okay, format. I'm going to use a format package and then also the uh, net slash HTT package. And it's all part of standard library. Okay, I'm gonna create my main function. Okay, uh, this tutorial is not gonna go into detail on how to create a website using Go, but I just want to make sure I cover the basics. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is create a new data type using a strut, and this is gonna be uh, just my page. And then within with my uh, main function, I'm gonna create a new variable. P for, let's just call it page. And if there's an error, listen and serve. I'm gonna just serve it to localhost. And I'm just going to serve it to port 3000. I'm going to pass in my page argument. Okay, if I do receive an error, just need to handle that. So check error. And then pass in the error if it occurs. And just build a function real quick. Check error. Pass in the arguments error as a error. Okay, if an error occurs, so if error equals nil. Sorry, if error does not equal nil, let's uh, create a panic. And then let's print out the actual error. Okay, so now um, I want to assign an actual method to my strut. So for that, I'm going to just do function. to p for page, just to pass in the, the uh, handler. And then let's serve the HTTP. Let's say write of HTTP dot response writer. And then read the HTTP re HTTP response. So there's a pointer HTTP dot request, and then uh, let's print out. There's a basic string of a uh, hello world. Uh, and I'm going to do that H1 tags. Okay, HTTP should be all capital. Okay, I'm just going to test this out on my local host. So, local host, port 3000. 
and then we get hello world. Okay, now that we have this running, I want to move it over to my server on DigitalOcean. But before I do that, uh, here you see I have localhost, and I'm using port 3000. Before running on DigitalOcean, I just need to remove this localhost part, or else I want to actually run. And then I'm going to save. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new droplet on DigitalOcean. That's what they call their uh, virtual machine. So create droplet, Ubuntu. I'm going to select the $5 a month server. And since I live closest to San Francisco, I'm just going to select San Francisco. And I'll be using SSH, so I'm going to select my main key. And I'm going to call this droplet Golang. Okay, now that this droplet is created, I'm going to just copy my IP address, because I'll need it later. And now I want to move this file over to that server. So I'm going to just pull up my terminal. And now that I'm in the appropriate directory, I want to just copy this main file onto my server on DigitalOcean. So the way I'm going to do that is I'll be using a secure copy. So STP, and I'll be using, I have SSH, so I'm going to find my SSH key. I'm using my main key. And I'm moving the file main.go to root at this IP address and then hit colon. Okay, I see it was copied over. So let me just clear this out. And I'm going to SSH into that uh, virtual machine. So I did a whole nother tutorial on how to SSH. I'm not going to explain any detail in this tutorial. So first I'm just SSH. Using my SSH key, my main key, SSH into root at my IP address. And there we have my main.go file. So what I want to do now is update uh, this virtual machine. So if you use your do apt update. Now that's updated, I want to install golang. So cp user do apt install golang. Okay, now that Go Lang's installed, I can now build uh, the file. So go build. And I want to name the file. So I'm going to just use this flag O. And then I want to call the file web page. Or I'm sorry, the program web page. So here I have my program. So in order to run it, I'm going to just hit dot forward slash web page. Now I'm going to pull up my web browser. Port 3000. IP address on port 3000, and I have the application Hello World. Okay, so the issue with this is, uh, let's say if we exit out the terminal. You're done for the day, your project's up and running, so you exit out. So once you exit and we refresh the server, then um, if, the if the terminal is not open, then the server's no longer working. You could either use screen or no hangup. Um, however, for this, I am going to use system D. So let me just quickly run through that to show you how to set that up. So I'm going to SSH back into my uh, virtual machine. And I'm going to go into the uh, system D directory. And what I'm going to do is uh, create a new service. So this is going to be called, called Golang web.service and I'm going to try to paste in the following text. Okay, so basically what this does is it gets my description. So this is a Go service. And under services, I'm going to execute within my root directory the web page application. I want to execute it as my user root under group root. And I want the program to always restart if error goes down. I'm not an expert on Service D, but I'll be sure to post more resources, give you more details on how to use uh, this system. I'm going to exit out. I'm going to save. And there's probably an easier way to do this, but I'm going to just reboot my system. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, SSH back into my server. And what I want to do is I want to start the service I just created. So if I just change the directories, 
I see the GoLang web service I just created. So what I do here is the super user do system CTL enable GoLang web service. And now I'll do super user do system CTL start and then the web service I just created. So GoLang web service. And now finally we can just check the status. So super user do system CTL status GoLang web. So it looks like it's running. We'll refresh. Application is still running. I'm close out. Still running. And just to show you the benefits um, that this has over using screen or um, another application such as that, I am going to SSH back in and I'm going to reboot my server. So super user do reboot. So I'm gonna refresh. It's not working because my server is currently down a minute or so and refresh again. And uh, once my server comes back up, uh, it will automatically start working again. All right, um, I hope this was helpful. I'll be sure to paste all the uh, additional resources I use throughout this video in the comments below. Uh, thank you so much.